So it feels really good to be back here with my with my brothers and sisters and see all their smiling faces. Um, so let's uh, open our service in, in prayer together this morning. Lord Jesus, thank you for your blessings of your church, the place provided by you to worship you, praise you, and to thank you. Thank you for all of my brothers and sisters gathered here today. We're here together as a family, Lord, bound together by your grace and your love. Lord Jesus, as we march together to 2023 as a Christian family, let's be mindful each and every day that nothing is more worthwhile than knowing you. Nothing is more urgent than making you known. By the power of your Holy Spirit, give us renewed focus and energy for these things. Help our church, your church, to be faithful to this mission and raise our expectations for what you will do this year. We ask this through Jesus Christ for his sake. Amen. I invite you all to uh, listen to our prelude by our choir. <laughs> the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Now please rise and join us for some worship song. <laughs>
Psalm 8, verses 9 and 10 says, The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. That is a promise for us this morning. As morning dawns and evening fades, you inspire songs of praise that rise from earth to touch your heart and glorify your name, your name. Is a strong and mighty tower, your name is a shelter like no other, your name. Let the nations sing it louder, cause nothing has the power to save but your name. in your name we pray. Jesus, in your name we pray. Come and fill our hearts today. Lord, give us strength to live for you and glorify your name. Your name mighty tower, your name is a shelter like no other, your name, let the nation sing it louder, cause nothing has the power to save your name, but your name is a strong and mighty tower. Shelter like no other, your name. Let the nation sing it louder, because nothing has the power to save. Nothing has the power. Nothing has the power to save, but your name. May be seated. Uh, if you brought a gift this morning for the Lord, I hope you put that in the offering box. If not, you can do that later. But I um, also want to note that if you're visiting, um, we do not charge money for you to come and worship with us, so there's no need to feel like you have to pay something to get in. Um, but giving is a way that we um, worship God and use what God has given us to do His work in this world. So I know you've just sat down, but I'll invite you to stand as we sing the doxology <laughs> and receive the offering today. Lord, we are grateful to be called by your name and to shelter in your name. We thank you for the gifts that you have given us for providing all that we need 
And now we offer back to you a portion of what you so richly deserve. Let this offering um, be an act of worship for each giver. And as always, we ask for your wisdom and blessing as we use what's entrusted to us to do your work in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning to everyone joining us on the live stream as well. We have a few announcements uh, today. The um, annual reports are due on the 11th of this month. Um, and the much anticipated annual meeting is on January 29th. So make sure to mark your calendars. And we will have a potluck before the meeting. Um, speaking of potlucks, there's also a 55 and up potluck this month on the 20th at 11 a.m. Um, and then teen night is on January 27th. Um, so you don't want to miss that if you're a teen. Also, we're looking for somebody to clean the church and the Jimmy Center. So if you are um, interested or know someone who might be interested, you can talk with Sarah Williams. Um, <laughs> Um, any other announcements from the congregation? Yes. Song. Good. They say they can't hear me on the uh, live feed. This is the month that we do the retired ministers and missionaries offering. Uh, this is to aid in the retirement fund for the ministers that may have brought you to Christ, who may have married you, who were there when your loved ones passed away, and were there for many of the other needs. And it's a time for us to thank them in a way that will be helpful for them. Uh, if you're as old as I am, you remember how little ministers made back in the day, and this would be very much appreciated. The envelopes are in the back next to the offering box. If you would pick one up, and this is, we will do it for the month of January. And I thank you for all of you who take part in this offering. Thanks, Betty. Tina had an announcement. Oh, the same one. Covered. Okay, perfect. Alexis, would you fill us in on birthdays and anniversaries? That's the mess. Uh, according to this, Brian Beachard's birthday is the 11th. And Sandy White and Brian Kinsman's birthday is the 13th. Now, I don't know if any of uh, Sandy and Brian are on live stream. I suspect they may be. They usually are. So I think even though they're not with us, we ought to be able to sit. Also, we have a young boy here, Helen Webb, who has a birthday on Wednesday. And he will be. Oh, your birthday? Seven? Great. So, oh, well, you are here, so we definitely have to be here. Well, he's downstairs, so. That's okay. Sing loud. There we go. Huh? Oh, yeah, Brian and Sandy's is an anniversary. I'm sorry. Well, I haven't know. We're not having our usual summer Friday night because we're going out for the anniversary. Okay, ready? Uh, happy birthday! All right. Oh, the pastor has an announcement. <laughs> the pastor. <laughs> I wanted to draw your attention to this piece of paper that's in the back. It's called Read a Book in 2023. And this year, I am challenging each and every one of you to read a book. Uh, I've curated a list of excellent Christian books. Um, most of these are ones that I've read. It's not like there's, I didn't pick them from some list on the internet, but I, I've read most of these. I know that they're helpful. They're thought-provoking. They're um, just edifying. So, 
And there's all kinds of categories, Bible and theology, marriage and family, missions and evangelism, spiritual formation, history, apologetics, fiction. There's even some books for kids and youth. So I'm going to be referring to this during my sermon, but please take one of these um, on your way out. It's also published on our website, and I link that on Facebook. And there's several of the books from this list back there, so you can look at them. Um, See what you think. Please don't take them, but look at them. But there's a box full of books of um, the one called Gentle and Lowly, The Heart of Christ for Sinners and Sufferers. It came out a couple years ago. They sent us a case of these books to give out to people, and it's an excellent book. So please take one of those. That is a gift to you. Um, Maybe that will be the one book you read this year. Um, So, back to you. Wonderful. What a great charge. He could be saying, like, exercise every day or eat more spinach, right? But read a book. Um, So uh, now we're going to keep the kids up for a little bit because um, we want them to join in prayer with us today. And also, I'm leading Children's Church. So, uh, (laughs) So kids, if you are... Here right now, uh, we're going to do something called a prayer of confession where we tell God we're sorry for our sins. And I want you to participate in this. This isn't just to listen to the adults doing it, but if you can read or if you can just listen to the words, you can pray along in your hearts with us. So let's confess to God together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and learn to to the glory of your name. Amen. And receive these words of assurance. Romans 8, verse 1, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And Psalm 103, verse 11, As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. That is good news, friends. Thanks be to God. Um, And please join me now in in a time of prayer. Father, we do come thankful that we can come to you through Jesus as people who are forgiven, that you have blazed a trail um, in Christ for us. And as we begin this new year, uh, let let us live as people who rely not on ourselves, but on you. Let us be people who trust you, people who depend on you, people who um, are humble, people who are, are quick uh, to confess our sin, quick to acknowledge our wrong, um, people who are quick to serve, quick to give, quick to love, and slow to anger, and slow to anxiety, and slow to self-sufficiency. Would you do your work in us, as, as um, individuals, as, as couples, as families, as um, a church. Let, let our friends and, and community know us in this church by our humility and by our love. And um, we, I just pray for everyone here this morning who comes with a heavy burden. Whatever it might be, you know what it is, Lord, and I ask that you would lift burdens off of my brothers and sisters here in this room, and that uh, may we be quick to run to you in our weariness, in our grief, in our fear, in our anxiety, in our loneliness, um, in, in 
our sadness in our whatever it is we are experiencing. And we also pray um, that as a church, we would be people of curiosity, that you would ignite this year in us a deeper wonder about you and about your world. Pray that we would be, um, be, would be people who delight in learning and, and that every, every observation and everything learned would be a reminder of you, the maker of all. So would you bless our imaginations? Would you bless our minds? Would you bless us with questions? Thank you for the children here and how they already, they have so much to teach us about holy curiosity. Would we be uh, willing to learn from them? And um, we pray for our community of Georgia and Franklin County that uh, the name of Christ would be great in this place, Lord. We pray for um, that we would be people who make your name great in the words we use and in the lives we live and ask that you would just give each of us here this, this year a conversations with and relationships where um, you are made known and where we can, we can lead others to you, Jesus. We pray for our world. We think of the war in Ukraine and we pray for our brothers and sisters there and ask that you would um, bring, bring an end to that, to that war and that you would work. Um, we just pray for shalom for Ukraine and Russia and um, invite the, the full power of, of you in that conflict. And let's pray the Lord's Prayer together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The kids can now be dismissed. going to jump around a little bit. Um, so if you're using your pew Bible, the, the first scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 2 on page 783 in your pew Bibles. Um, so we're going to do Matthew 2, 1 through 2, and then 9 through 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, uh, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Psalm 145, three through five is on page 508. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and I will meditate on your wonderful works. 1 Peter 3.8 is on page 982. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble.
And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Carrie. You may be wondering why those scriptures have been chosen, and you'll find out. Um, I want to start with a story. Our daughter Chloe has a hermit crab that lives in a little terrarium on top of her dresser. Um, much to her disappointment, we said no to a puppy. We said no to a kitten. We said no to a hamster. We said no to a guinea pig. We said no to a mouse. But we did say you can have a hermit crab. <laughs> this was a, a year or two ago. And it was very exciting when she brought home the crab and the terrarium and all the stuff to put inside it. And she got it all set up. And she had to put a couple inches of this stuff called substrate on the bottom, which is like coconut husk that it can bury into and as she put the crab into the tank it sort of walked around and was like exploring its new environment so she said I'm gonna call him curious so we have a hermit crab named curious unfortunately since that day it hasn't lived up to its name because <coughs> it spends about 23 and a half hours buried in the substrate every day I think it comes out at night to take a little food and go back. So now the name Curious always strikes me as ironic for this crab. The, the sermon today is called, Do You Have Permission to Be Curious? Um, I'm taking a little break before we plunge back into Exodus to preach a mini sermon series for this and the next two weeks about a few things that can get overlooked or avoided in Christian circles, and yet these are things we really need to do in order to have a healthy life and faith. Um, and the first one today is about curiosity. You have permission to be curious. Um, your curiosity is a gift from God who designed you to be curious about the right things and for that to lead you to him. Um, Webster's Dictionary defines curiosity as the desire to know. The desire to know. Now, not all things are worth knowing or finding out. Sometimes curiosity can be foolish. I wonder if this car can go 100 miles an hour. I wonder if I can eat this whole pizza all by myself. Right? <laughs> We've all done things that you know, prove the expression, curiosity killed the cat. <clears throat> sometimes curiosity can be downright sinful we say I wonder what I could say that would hurt that person the most or I wonder how far I can push this sin until I get caught not you know sometimes a desire to know is bad but when our curiosity is harnessed for good it is an engine that leads us closer to God that's what I want to talk about this morning. And specifically, I want to share three different areas in your life where curiosity will serve you well, where God wants you to be curious. I'm going to weave a, a few different scriptures together, um, but listen carefully because there may be one thing in this sermon that really is for you today. And let's begin in prayer. Father, I'm aware that um, my words are as nothing compared to um, you and your truth. Uh, this is a small offering, and yet I pray that by your power, by your word, you would speak through um, what I've prepared and let, um, let your message come through for your people today. And make us curious in the right ways. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> So three ways, three areas where your curiosity will serve you well. Number one, follow curiosity toward God. Curiosity is necessary in order to know the Lord. You know, we serve a God who is worthy of wonder. He is wonderful. You could learn something new about God or of God each day or each moment for a million years and not reach the limit of what there is to know. The Psalm 145 that was read said, Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. 
One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. God is truly wonderful. He, uh, bec- and because of that, we are meant to wonder about him, to be in awe, to ask questions, to think. This is essentially what theology is. Now, when you hear the word theology, you might think dusty books and cold hallways and academies um, or even something dogmatic that shuts down questions, but actually theology is about questions. You know, who is God? What is he like? What has he done? How do these parts of his word fit together? How should we live if these things are true? That's theology. Curiosity is essential. Now, the primary curriculum for answering our questions is the Word of God. Um, This book is meant to arouse your curiosity. Friends, if, if you've gotten to a place where this seems boring or like a chore, I invite you to to take a second look. Read parts of this book this year that you haven't read before. Um, Read parts that are familiar and ask God to show you new things. Learn to ask questions about what you read that can help you understand and draw closer to God. You know, sometimes the Bible doesn't answer your questions, but it gives you better questions. You know, you come asking, how can I feel peace or how can I have this? And God says, actually, you need to know, um, how can I be right with you? Or how can I trust you more? Or what are you like? What is God like? So read the Bible. The very first book on this reading list is called Savoring Scripture, a six-step guide to studying the Bible. Um, It's actually by a former professor of mine um, of Old Testament, and it's an excellent book that will serve you well um, if you want to understand the Bible more. Also, read books about the Bible or theology or Christian life that help you ask other questions and help you grow, help you ask questions you might not have asked. All the books on that reading list will do that. They will... They will help you wonder and think and ask. What keeps us from asking questions, from being curious? In my experience, sometimes it's pride. I think, well, I already know that. Or, I've read the Bible, I know what it says. Or, I I know God. That's pride. (laughs) The, The famous... Fourth century theologian and pastor named St. Augustine said, If you understood him, he would not be God. (laughs) So stay curious. Sometimes something that dampens our curiosity is fear. We're afraid of asking certain questions for fear of what we will find or won't find, right? But no one ever grew in their faith by ignoring questions. Uh, James Trombley, who gave me permission to share this, uh, he grew up, grew up sporadically going to church. Um, and here's what he, he told me this week. You know, as he grew up, he, got, he was curious and he asked questions like all of us do. He said, I would ask questions like, why is Christmas on December 25th if we don't know Jesus' birthday? Or, How can God love us, but he's going to send us to hell if we don't do what we are supposed to do? When I would come across things in the real world that didn't line up with what I understood about Christianity, no one around me knew or seemed to want to dig into it. These were family members, friends, other people I came across. I always felt like they were afraid to scratch the surface for fear they would find problems with their own faith. Or they might anger God by doubting what they knew. And he said, if people had not only had encouraged finding these answers, but joined me in seeking answers for their own understanding, I think things might have been different. 
And what he means by being different is that he walked away from the faith for many years, partly because no one was helping him answer the questions he had. By God's grace, God drew him back and um, gave him people that could help him think through these things. So I wonder if this might be the year for you to explore a big, nagging question that you have always had. Like, how can God be good in a world full of so much suffering? Or, um, how can Jesus be the only way when there are so many other religions in this world? Is that really true? How can I understand science in light of Genesis 1 through 11 and vice versa? How do those fit together? What is the Bible's teaching on homosexuality, and how does it compare with what the world says? These are important questions to think about. And so um, maybe this is a year for you to do that. You have permission to be curious. Um, One book that I'll draw your attention to on that list is called Confronting Christianity, uh, 12 Hard Questions for the World's Largest Religion by Rebecca McLaughlin. There's also a teen version called 10 Questions Every Teen Should Ask and Answer About Christianity. Well, that's the first and longest part is that we need to be curious about God and his word. But number two, we need to use our curiosity to love others, to love people. Curiosity is necessary for love. Did you know that? You can't love someone unless you understand them. And you can't understand someone unless you find out about them, right? There are many commands in the New Testament like the one that was read from 1 Peter 3.8. Be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. How can you be sympathetic towards someone that is to feel what they feel if you don't know what they feel? <laughs> if you don't know what they're going through? If you, you know, do they have a big health problem that they're concerned about? Is their child struggling? Are they approaching an anniversary of a painful event? Or maybe they're rejoicing in a new job or the birth of a new grandchild or a new relationship. If you're curious about people and find out about them, you can love them better. One of the most loving things you can do for someone is ask good questions about them. What do they like? What makes them tick? What experiences have made them who they are? How have they been wounded? What are their hopes and dreams? You see, questions. And this takes time, it takes attention, it it takes curiosity and careful listening, but that is a very spiritual thing to do. One of my professors in seminary named Dwayne Elmer told our class a story about an epic failure of curiosity in his marriage. Uh, When he was first married, he wanted to get his wife the best gift he could possibly think of to show her how much he loved her and how he wanted to take care of her. So, being a good Midwesterner, a Wisconsinite that he was, he purchased his wife a brand new set of the best snow tires for her car that he could possibly imagine, (laughs) possibly afford. Thankfully, the marriage survived. (laughs) And what he learned from that experience was that um, what he thought would be a good gift wasn't what his wife thought would be a good gift. So he had to be curious about, well, honey, what would you like to receive for Christmas? What would... What would make you feel loved and cared for and protected? If you've ever had an experience like that, there's a book called The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman that will do you well. It's back there if you want to look at it. And that's, it isn't just about family or marriage or, you know, it's so important for parenting, for friendship, for work, and for relationships in the church. We need to be curious about other people to love them. So I have an assignment for you. Next time you are talking with a friend or maybe in a small group study together, 
come to that conversation more ready to listen and ask questions than to talk and to say what you think. There may be a moment where someone shares something about themselves that's like they're opening the door a crack to see, are you going to come in or not? And if you just say, oh, okay, well, that reminds me of something I've been thinking about lately, the door is going to slam shut. And they're going to withdraw inward and, and maybe not feel safe to share that thing again. But what if, instead of talking, you asked a follow-up question and said, tell me more about that? Or, what was that like for you? You know, curious questions. Then the door opens and they invite you in. And suddenly you get to know that person at a deeper level. We have to make that kind of space for each other in conversations if we're going to love each other well. Well, I want to share one more area in which God-given curiosity is essential. And this might sound like it contradicts what I just said, but it doesn't. So here it is. Be curious about yourself. I'm not talking about navel-gazing or like the selfie generation stuff. I'm talking about courageous, prayerful, spirit-guided self-examination. You know, ask questions about your own experiences. If you read the Psalms, you find David and the other authors often asking themselves questions like, Psalm 42, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Or in Psalm 139, where he invites the Lord to help him reveal what is wrong in his heart. Lord, search me and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me. And you have opportunities to do this every day. Um, let, let's say you have a moment of failure. Let's say you get really angry and lose your temper with someone. Or maybe you find yourself really anxious about something. How do you deal with that? Well, one common thing we do is we ignore it. We just stuff those feelings down and move on. Now that's really a problem if you've hurt someone in your anger and then you just go on as if nothing has happened. Or sometimes we can... Um, beat ourselves up about it, like, oh, I'm such a bad person. Why did I do that again? I'm, oh, I just, can't, I just can't change, right? That doesn't help. But what if you approached yourself with compassionate curiosity and said, huh, I wonder why I reacted so strongly when I did. I wonder what was going on under the surface. I wonder what I believe about God or myself that, um, that contributed to that response. These are the kinds of questions that the Lord loves to give us insight from. Insight into your own experience so that you can know the Lord better. So that you can experience His love in all of those broken places, ask yourself curious questions. So you see, curiosity is not an optional add-on for the Christian life. Um, it's not something to be avoided. It is part of the essential toolkit of faith. In fact, none of us would be here without it. Because at some point, if you're sitting here or watching the live stream, and if you're a Christian or if you're seeking God, at some point you've asked questions like, is the Bible really true? Uh, could God really love me? Did Jesus really rise from the dead? Sometimes your questions have been prayerful, like, Lord, where are you? Lord, why did you let this happen? That's, those are the questions that lead us closer to God. So I wonder where God is inviting you to be curious today. If you could name one thing that you need to ask more questions about, what is it? 
Is it about God? Something about the Bible? Something about who he is? Is it about a person in your life that you need to really love by being curious toward? Or is it about yourself? When I was talking about the sermon with Meg this week, she reminded me of the story of the Magi, the wise men. And it occurred to me that this Sunday is the very day that many churches read the story of the Magi coming to worship Jesus. It's called Epiphany, or Three Kings Day. It's actually January 6th, but many churches celebrate it the Sunday after. And it occurred to me that this is a perfect example of how curiosity leads us to Jesus. Because you have these, these scholars, these um, court officials in Persia, somewhere hundreds or a thousand miles away from Bethlehem, and they study the stars. Now, God knows that there's nothing in the stars that determines people's fates or futures, but he still spoke to them through that enterprise, and they noticed something. They were curious about this new star, curious enough to travel hundreds of miles across rough terrain for weeks or months and to go to Jerusalem and ask, where is this new king? And then to go to Bethlehem where they finally found him and to kneel before this child and worship him as the Lord. That's a picture of what all of our curiosity is supposed to do, to lead us to Jesus. He wants to use your curiosity to lead you to him. So you have permission to be curious. Let's pray. Lord, I know that there are many questions that we have. Um, Some of us have burning questions. Some have questions we've ignored for a long time. Some of us don't know what questions to ask. And so I pray that you would give us holy curiosity for you, for others, for our own souls, and that we would learn to ask the right questions that lead to Jesus. I pray this in his name. Amen. First, uh, we didn't have communion last week, as you remember if you were here, Um, but this is the first time this year when we get to observe the Lord's Supper together. And we have something special today. We're going to go back to serving. The deacons will be bringing you the elements. We haven't done that since March 2020, so it's been a while where I had to talk to Roy and Peggy to remember, how how do we do this again? What's the path that they go on? And so I'd like to invite, invite the deacons Roy and, he- Roy and Peggy up now as we prepare for communion. Um, just a few um, items to note. Uh, first of all, um, on the bread trays, there are a few um, little cups that have gluten-free wafers in the top along with the juice below. So if you need something gluten-free, you can take one of those cups that has the bread and the juice for you. Um, Also, this is a time to curiously examine your own heart as we come to the table and ask, Lord, um, how has my walk been with you lately? To think about those areas that we confessed, maybe the things you confessed to the Lord this morning in our prayer of confession, and to receive God's mercy, and to remember the amazing love that Jesus has for you. So this is open to anyone who is a follower of Jesus, who trusts him as their Lord and Savior. Um, Let's come now with just wonder and gratitude at what Jesus, our Lord, has done. Lord, we pray that this time of fellowship around the Lord's Supper, around this 
these symbols that you have created, that you have instituted, um, would reassure us, uh, would help us to feel and experience your saving love. And if any of us question, Lord, do you really love me? We know the answer is yes. As we eat the bread and drink the, the juice that reminds us of your body and blood that were broken and shed for us. In your name, amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed to his death, he took bread and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. After supper, Jesus took a cup and said, This is the new covenant in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, drink it in remembrance of me.
This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now would you join me in singing You are faithful, O Lord. You are faithful, O Lord. Every day and every hour, you are faithful, O Lord. We will trust you. We will trust you, O Lord. We will trust you. us, O oh Lord. How you love us, O oh Lord. How you love us, O oh Lord. Every day and every hour, how you love us, O oh Lord. Now may the Lord be gracious to you and bless you and make his face shine upon you. May the Lord, <laughs> I just forgot how the benediction goes. <laughs> May the Lord be gracious to you and bless you and make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and bless you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs>